red flag of Japanese men. The cheating culture over here is different, apparently. They think foreign women are so easy. They say, I love you really quick. <laughs> hey guys, how you doing? I'm Takashi. So today I'm gonna interview foreign women. What red flags the Japanese guys have? So basically, we're gonna discuss about Japanese dating culture and Western dating culture from women's perspective. Okay, let's get started. Where are you from? How long have you been in Japan? Um, my name is Kira, and I was born and raised in Tanzania, and then I lived in Australia and America, and I have a working holiday visa in Japan, so I'm here for like two years. I'm from America, California, in and the US. You're, you're Japanese? Yes, I'm Japanese American. I've been here for almost two years now. I'm from Russia. My name is Elena. I'm here for four or five months, and I'm exchange student here, study abroad. I'm from Colombia, and I've been in Japan for two years. I'm from DR Congo, and I've been in Japan for seven years. So I'm from the Philippines, so I've been in Japan for like almost three years now. And you're half Japanese, right? Yes, I'm half Japanese, half Filipino. I'm from Minnesota in the United States, and I've been in Japan for one and a half years, almost two years. I'm from Melbourne, Australia, and I've been in Japan for two years now. I'm from the UK, but I currently live in Spain, and now I'm living in Japan. I've been here for three months, and I'll be going home soon. I've been seven months in Japan right now, and I'm from Colombia. I'm from Italy. I've been in Japan for more than one year, and I study here. Okay, so you mentioned that you have experience of dating in Japan, right? Yeah, I did date sometimes, yeah, for a few months. With Japanese guys? With Japanese guys, yeah. How was it? Interesting, to be honest. Like, um, there's clearly, like, a different culture, like, Italian, Japanese culture. It's, like, the communication style especially is very, very different. So, for example, we are very, very open. Actually, one want to express the, like their feelings mm. as they feel them. But Japanese people, I feel like most of them, sometimes they just don't really communicate mm -hmm. their feelings or they have maybe a different way to communicate them, but I don't know. Yeah. So it's like that is the most, uh, the big problem. Uh, it was pretty for two, to be honest. Um, first, I met these guys half from dating apps and half in real life. And I would say as someone who's coming from Congo, they were very similar to African men in a way. They're very, they have a high sense of chivalry. And when you go on a date, they like paying for things and being the man and stuff like that. So yeah, I think it was pretty similar to my experience dating in Africa. Really? <laughs> yes. Okay, okay. So we met on a dating app. And then we started dating after a while. And yeah, that's how basically we became a couple. He asked me to be his girlfriend on like the third date. So... That's, that's so typical, yeah. I, that's the way Japanese people started dating. Yeah. So, so, yeah. so I've heard like they asked on the third date, so that's what he did. So the whole relationship was like overall good. But one thing that I have noticed is it's completely different to Western dating in terms that like... Culture. Yeah, if you come, and if you come here like and you date someone, there's like the three date rule or something. So like maybe by like the third date, you're more like boyfriend and girlfriend. Mm. In Western cultures, sometimes you can be seeing each other for three months before you even say mm. like, what are we? Mm. So it's really different that way. I've had nothing but positive experiences with guys I've dated in Japan. I think they're kind of different in different regions, like a guy from Tokyo is really different from a guy in Kyoto. And I think everyone in general is super like respectful and nice. I think they're like, they like to take care of women and like kind of treat you in a really polite, traditional way. So you mentioned that guys from Tokyo, guys from Kyoto, so basically Kanto and Kansai, yeah. how different? I find guys from Tokyo to be more like edgy and like cool. Like I think they have like more like city vibes. So they're into like fashion and like photography. Whereas guys in like Kansai region are like really funny and like, like nature. <laughs> like I think they're way more chill, but both are really nice people. Um, <laughs> I mean, some of them went well uh. and then others did not go so well. They all speak English. Actually, they all could speak English, but some of them, when I'm on a date with them, we don't speak any English because maybe, I think maybe they're embarrassed or shy. So it was all Japanese. Okay, so we met through Bumble <laughs> and we've dated for like four months. And yeah. <laughs> uh, that was a good experience? Uh, I, I can say like it's, it's a good experience though, but it's not really dating but we are more than just friends okay okay so how, how did you meet him at the university like how 
mm, he just started to talk to me and it was so strange because a uh, Japanese guy is really shy. No, I've never been on a date with a Japanese guy Why? yet. Why? Why? <laughs> Uh, it's kind of interesting. I found that Japanese society, uh, Japanese men are more like shy and uh, well, majority of them, they don't speak English. I'm still learning Japanese. So obviously like the language is a little bit difficult to out us. So it's mostly like the language and uh, I think they're not that open to date uh, foreign women. Why do you think so? Uh, I think it's a, like, yeah, very different culture. Maybe we they can think we're very like extroverted. Maybe they're like more like old school. Maybe they want someone that is more introverted, like more shy, more like a woman of the house maybe. You're married to a Japanese man, right? How did you guys meet? Um, we met online and we were friends for about one year and then he came to visit me in America. And from that point, we started dating and now we've been together for two years and married for almost one year. How did you meet him? Past. In person or only like Bumble or whatever? Normally in person. I did have Bumble last year for a little while and How was it? it was very it was very interesting. But um I met some really cool people there. Um some of my closest friends have actually come from Bumble. Mm. Um the Bumble BFF and the normal dating side, which has mm. been cool. But I love meeting people just like walking around and at cafes. I've met a lot of people at cafes. Yeah. Bumble. Bumble? <laughs> yeah. Not Tinder. Though. No, Tinder here is not very good. I mean, people on Tinder don't show their face. A lot of the pictures are just food or animals, and it has no information about the person. So it's kind of scary, especially as a woman. You don't know anything. But on Bumble, you have to be verified a lot of the time. And, you know, people actually show pictures of their face, and it has stuff about their personality. Mm. So I, And Bumble is actually half, I would say about half foreigners, half Japanese people here. So... Yeah, you can find different people that you get along with or have things in common with there. That's interesting. I didn't know that because uh, my foreign friends, they all mention when they're on a Tinder in Japan, like there's no Japanese girls who show in their face. So, but for Japanese guys, it's the same. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Because yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm a guy, so I don't know. You yeah, know, yeah. They're no, it's the same on yeah. Tinder. I think, I don't know why. It's just like a culture not to show your face on Tinder. I think uh, maybe still kind of judged. Maybe you might be judged but on Bumble, if you you're not judged to be honest so my friends my japanese friends who don't speak english who don't have any experience of living abroad and stuff like they never use bumbles mm -hmm. right yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. cuz i think they don't even know the app yeah. or yeah i think yeah it's mostly japanese people that have interests yeah. i think in foreign culture that use bumble or like want to practice speaking english you mentioned dating app which app yeah. bumble um bumble and hinge are like hinge. yeah i've heard of it what is that what's the difference of bumble and hinge uh, like dating thing in japan i think hinge is like more like down to earth because you really have to put in effort and like what you write uh -huh. and i think you can get like a really good vibe off the people there and i think they're more handsome sometimes when i first came to japan i wanted to make japanese friends so i used like some apps for language exchange like hello talk mm. uh, tandem whatever mm. and in that case like you meet many japanese people Guys that just want to date you, they don't want to exchange language. <laughs> so <laughs> that is like very, very hot. Because uh, I mean, if you need to date someone, you just go to other apps. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I try, I generally try to make friends there, but it's... It's uh, getting Tinder. <laughs> yeah, I just talk to girls now uh, on that uh, app. Uh, so red flags in Japanese guides or something negative? Is there anything you want to say? I guess something negative is I think ghosting is a little bit more common here. Mm than in the US. I mean, obviously in the US it's an issue too, but here people will just cut off communication without saying anything. Broking. Yeah, or, or just not messaging mm -hmm. after, you know, messaging for a long time or like seeing someone and then completely just ignoring you after. I guess Japanese people, generally mm -hmm. speaking, <laughs> stereotypically like to avoid confrontation. And so maybe it's a little more common here. Do you have experience or do you know someone who have experienced that? I have experience with like suddenly people stop being messaging, uh, but I do have friends that have actually, you know, dated days. people and then suddenly they were ghosted or they didn't show up to the date and that was planned. Never. Yeah. Contact again. Yeah. Oh, that's bad. Yeah. <laughs> okay. 
Before we continue interviews, this video is sponsored by Tokyo Treat and Sakurako. Sakurako is a subscription service where you receive a monthly Japanese artisan snack box filled with traditional and artisan Japanese snacks. Sakurako helps in partnering with local Japanese snack makers to continue to share Japanese culture and traditions that have been passed down for over 100 years. This month's theme is Hug of Ishikawa. In January, a major earthquake hit Ishikawa, and I'm so grateful that Sakurako is raising awareness while highlighting delicious local sweets. And Sakurako also has Japanese table every month. This month, I got these wakasa chopsticks. This is hojicha kinako mochi. These mochi are coated in kinako, a roasted soybean flour, and filled with sweet hojicha. This is gorojima cake. Enjoy soft cakes featuring the rich flavors of vegetables, sweet potatoes, and the elegance of black tea. And Tokyo Treat is packed with the latest seasonal sweets. In contrast to Sakurako, which represents traditional Japanese culture, you can feel a modern life in Japan with Tokyo Treat. This month's theme is Osaka Snackation, with this snack-filled box showcasing the city's best bites. This is Ramune Dorayaki. As a big fan of Dorayaki, to be honest, I was a bit skeptical about the Ramune, but it turned out to be really, really good. This is Koikea Wasabi Seaweed Chips. Also, as a wasabi lover, this is my favorite of this month. You cannot stop eating this. And each snack is explained so that you can see what's produced. And you can also check origin information. This will give you more places to go when you come to Japan. So if you like to experience having good quality Japanese snack around your home, click the link in the description below. Yeah, um, so cheating culture is a lot different okay. in America and Japan, first off. So that caused some problems with us just because difference in like um, morals and like different beliefs and stuff. To, like on cheating and whatnot. I think Americans consider a lot more things cheating. Like for example, messaging other people online, you know, watching certain videos online, um, you know, liking other people's posts. But w what I've learned about like, Japanese women are a lot, like a lot looser with their definition of cheating. So a lot of times they'll let their boyfriends go to, you know, brothel or let them, you know, message other girls online, go out with other girls, like hang out, um, go to girls bars and they don't really care about it. But I think that um, American women are a lot more like um, strict about what they think is cheating. Do you have Japanese female friends who are saying that it's okay for them, their boyfriends, who do those kind of things? Yeah, I've had, I mean, yeah, I have a Japanese friend who says it's okay if her boyfriend goes to like girls' bars, brothels, texts other girls, as long as he tells her about it. I'm not the same way. I, I say, you know, absolutely don't go to brothel, you know. I'm, don't go to girls' bar. I don't want you to text other people, really. The cheating culture over here is different, apparently. Um, so sometimes if you go to like a prostitute, that's not considered cheating. But I've seen that is such a debate on like TikTok and Instagram. On my videos as well. Oh, yeah, I think I also saw it on your video once. <laughs> what about your Japanese girlfriends? Mm -hmm. what, what do they say about that? Oh, some of them don't care. Like some Actually them, don't care. Some of them don't care. They're like, oh, like, it doesn't matter because like they say in the videos, like there's no love there. Feeding, feeding. Yeah. I'm like, oh my God, I would die. Mm. Like if I found out my boyfriend went to a prostitute, like they wouldn't come back. I'd be like, you're not mine now. <laughs> I think it depends on the couple. For me, I'm used to telling my feelings and like, I like to learn about my couple and like what they feel, what they think about. So for me, language barrier will be pretty hard to overcome. I'm from Colombia, so we're used to saying things more directly. And I think he didn't like that. I mean, he didn't know how to communicate either, I will say. So he will bottle up like his feelings and stuff and then just suddenly just say them. And I try to like show him more about how to communicate yeah. like in a more assertive way. Uh, but I think we never really match in that sense. In Colombia, they're like much more open. If they like you, they will say it like directly. And they will be much more open when they invite you on a date. Uh, in Japan, what I found is more like uh, very reserved and very um, respectful, which I like. Uh, but yeah, it's very reserved. So you don't know uh, the majority of times what are they thinking. If they like you, if don't, or yeah, how to... Um, act on a date so yeah it's, it's very different it's more like introverted do japanese guys approach you on the streets 
or in person. Yes, actually. Yeah. But half the time it's kind of like nampa. Mm. So that is kind of, I think, different. Mm. But other times I was asked out, it was like, you know, a person that worked at a coffee shop that I went to a lot. And it's kind of that vibe, mm. you know? Nampa. Nampa men, it's when like a guy approaches you and they're like hitting on you. So in English, it's just like a guy coming up and hitting on you. And they're very, very persistent. And it's such a red flag when they touch you and like whisper things in your ear. If someone wants to come and talk to me respectfully, and then I tell them like, I'm not interested and then they go like away, that's so fine. But they're really persistent. Like I've had people, like after I tell them I'm married, they'll say, oh, that doesn't matter. You know, just one night, just one night of fun, you know? I've heard it from a lot of foreign women as well. Oh, I've had, I've had people come up to me, um, especially if you ever go through like Shibuya. Yeah. If you ever go through Shibuya coming out of the station, someone will come up to you. Oh, um, oh but they will just come up and be like, oh, where are you from? Like, and that's how they start the conversation. Even Japanese guys who don't speak English, they try to speak English to you? Yeah, they do. And like, because they're even trying to speak English to me, like I want to talk, like, help them and like talk to them a little bit because maybe it's just nice practice and everything. Um, I mean, I love practicing my Japanese with people. Yeah, I've had people come up to me just on the street even, just like anywhere. And then some of my closest friends have just approached me before and that's just how we became friends, which is really cool. <laughs> the fact that they are very, th those that I dated were very uh, manly in the sense that they want to have the last say, they want to decide for you, they want to not be corrected, they don't want to argue. For example, when we have a deep discussion about topics that are, you know, about life, about societies, about culture, the Japanese men that I dated would not want you to argue with them. When they have an opinion, they discuss with you and you tend to disagree, they're like offended about it. And it was, <laughs> the, I think the main, you know, source of argument with me with uh, dating Japanese men was them not wanting me to talk back or to argue on what the statement. Uh -huh. These things are very normal, I would say, in my, because I've dated men from, from different places and different continents, but I felt like uh, in the Japanese dating scene, you are, the woman place is still very like uh, old, you know, mm. you are the woman type of, you know, and the man is the man. So, yeah. I used to date like Filipino guys, or they're more like, you know, like more expressive. Mm, direct? Yeah, very direct compared to, I'm, I'm not generalizing all Japanese, yeah, yeah. Japanese it, it's like based on my personal experience. Like it's kind of like more like passive. Japanese guys as well? Yes, okay. yes, yes. The ja I mean, like the Japanese guy that I dated, like cause... they don't take action. Yes, kind of like passive, and you know, like they don't want to like communicate, like you know, like mm. the open communication. They kind of avoid the serious yes, topic. Yeah, something like that. Uh, you didn't like that. You... I didn't like that at all because I feel like communication is like the most important in relationship. Usually, uh, in Italy, it takes a lot of months to actually get to know the person first and then become girlfriend and boyfriend. Yeah. But here, I feel like the whole process is just speed up. Because <laughs> it's like after maybe a few months, like one month uh, or so, yeah. it's like, oh, do you want to be my girlfriend? Even though you, your um, emotion, like your feelings are not strong for that person, you actually become a couple. That's true. I think people getting in a relationship here, it's more like casually than other places. Uh, yeah, I think it's very quick and even though you're still trying to get to know the person you can be in an official relationship at the same time i think that's not the case in maybe like western countries but yeah well i do think that japanese um the way that they see relationships is different to how we may see it in some other western countries for example in spain a relationship usually goes slow and it takes longer for someone to become boyfriend and girlfriend for them to actually become a couple. However, I feel like in Japan, it's either nothing or everything. You know, they jump from um, being friends or getting to know each other directly into dating. They say, I love you really quick. <laughs> and I don't know why. Like, maybe they think because it's I'm... That's strong voice. No, but also I think they do... <laughs> like, uh, believe it sometimes like I think it's like very like fast emotions and maybe they get kind of get swept away but yeah that's not common in the US to say like I love you after like three days sometimes like I feel like some Japanese men only want to date me because I look different 
because I've met some people where I think it wouldn't even matter what I said. They would just be like, okay, like I want to date you and I don't like that. How did you know this? This one guy, he wouldn't really ever engage in conversation that much. Like, like talking about topics and everything, he would just nonstop just keep telling me like how he thought I was so cute and pretty and that. And it just didn't feel like it was going any deeper than the like, fact that he just thought I was cute. Like he looks at you like a little bit like objective. Yes. Yeah, exactly. So I don't like that. Do you think Japanese guys in general are attracted to non-Japanese women? Or do you think Japanese guys want to date Japanese girls? As far as you know, as far as you know. As far as I know, I find that Japanese guys kind of want to explore a little bit and like try something new because Japanese girls are a little more like traditional and I think mm -hmm. they all kind of like stick to themselves in their girl groups. Whereas like someone that's foreign and loves to like adventure and is like really open-minded and can maybe teach them something new. Mm -hmm. Anything you want to say to the people who want to have experience with dating in Japan for, for women, women, women? So I will say, don't try to change your partner. They are the way they are. So you should accept them and you should be with someone who accepts you too. So yeah, don't get into fights about changing the other person if they don't want to. There is a certain stereotype from the Japanese men where they think foreign women are so easy mm. to get, that we get physical faster than a Japanese woman will go and then first or second date they will try to like be very touchy or try to kiss you or try to have very sexual comments you would think okay this is normal but it's not very japan like so i think that's a red flag for me because i didn't want anything like casual like that so one location where they bring you on the first date two how they behave with you physically if they're too physical too fast they don't want anything serious number three is introducing you to their friends if they not want to introduce you to their friends like that, girl, you're not going anywhere with them. <laughs> that's not the common in Japan. I, I've heard that that's pretty common in Western countries. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty common. Like when the relationship is getting somewhere, the, the man kind of feel proud to like show you off or just, you know, it's just normal, I would say, steps of relationship, right? But if you keep seeing that man for a long time, you've never seen his friend or any anybody that's very close to him that we women use as a metric sometimes, like, who you are surrounded by says a lot about your personality, right? So if they're hiding you from their friends and family, I think that's a huge red flag. Which will happen often here? Yes, uh, yes. Yeah. I don't think I've ever met any of my Japanese dates, friends or anybody close to them, yeah. Be clear with what you think is cheating, like what you define as cheating with your partner when you start dating them. Be clear, have a conversation about it. And also don't, Go to Shibuya alone at night if you're a woman. Oh yeah, I think like the number one like tip that I could give is to learn the language, you know, just to, to have like more like open like communication. You think so? Yeah, 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 I think so. Because like you're here in Japan, so might as well like practice, you know, the, the language yeah. also. But I'm half Japanese with that. <laughs> but, but I mean like, but if you live in Tokyo, I think it's really easy to meet someone who can speak really good English, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you still think it's mandatory to learn it's Japanese? It's really mandatory, but it's really helpful. Oh, uh, that's true. Yes, yes. I think I used to think that there's like a d specific difference mm. between dating Japanese men and dating, say, an American man. Mm. Um, but as I've been here longer, I kind of think that it's just up to a person's personality. Oh, yeah, like, obviously, there are some stereotypes, but, you know, there are shy American men and then also very forward and active Japanese men. And it's not because they're American or because they're Japanese right. that they're that way. I think a lot of it is just a person's personality. Okay, thank you for watching so far. How was it? That was interesting. I'm also planning to interview foreign men in Japan about their experience of dating in Japan. So when I brought it, please check it out. Okay, anyway, thank you for watching. If you like this video, click like button. Please subscribe to my channel. If you have any question you want me to ask people in Japan, please leave the comment too. See you next time.